Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss geeks for geeks problem of the day and today's problem is vertex cover and it is a hard level problem. So what they have done is they have defined what is a vertex cover and uh, we have to find the smallest possible size of a valid vertex cover, right. So let me just define what is a vertex cover. So for example, if there is an edge, there will definitely be two nodes, right. In any graph or tree, an edge will be connected by two different nodes. So you have to choose all the edges, right, you have to cover all the edges in such a way at least one of these two endpoints is chosen, right. So basically, you have to select a set of vertices, right, such that for each edge, one of the vertices is chosen, right. So let me just give you an example, if they, okay, so they have not drawn a graph, we will draw this particular graph and then we will see how the answer is coming 2, 3, 4, right. So let us say we have this particular graph, right, okay, now. so let me just move it to the side. So I am going to draw this particular graph where I have 1 and then 1 is connected with 2 and then 4 is connected with 1 and then uh, 2 is connected with 4, so 2 is connected like this and 3 is connected with 4 as well, so 3 let us say like this and then 5 is connected with 2. 5 is connected with 2 and then 1 is connected with 3, right. So it is something like this. Now the answer is coming out to be uh, 2, 3 and 4. So 2 is here, 3 is here and 4 is here. So we need to make sure for each edge inside the whole graph, so these are the edges, right. For each edge at least one of the endpoints must be chosen. So let us say if I choose uh, 2, 3 and 4, so this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. So 4 is basically going to cover these 3 edges, right. Now 3 can cover this particular edge as well as this particular edge but it has already been covered by 4 so we do not need to worry about it and then 2 will cover this edge and this edge. So you see we have chosen a set of vertices such that all the edges are covered, right. This is what a vertex cover is known as and we have to find the minimal possible size of a vertex cover that means the number of vertices that we choose in this case was 2, 3, 4 should be minimum. Right. So, uh, if uh, I show you my submissions, so as you can see I got a lot of like uh, TLEs and uh, the way I implemented this problem, I feel that it, that it should pass on other platforms but uh, due to the strict time limit it was not getting accepted in Geeks for Geeks. So I will explain you this problem in two ways, first of all the brute force way and a little optimization over it, right. So how we can solve this problem is a very simple way would be to go through all the subsets. Right. So, what are the subsets in this particular uh, problem? The value of n in this case is only 10, 16, right. So, if I show you, you can see that the value of n is only up to 16. So, if the value of n is 16, what we can do is the total number of subsets will be 2 raised to the power 16, right. So, that means in 2 raised to the power 16, which is approximately 65,000, so 65 into 10 is power 3, right. So, in this, in this number of ways, we can figure out what are all the subsets of vertices, right. Now our task is to identify whether a subset of vertices is able to satisfy the conditions or not, right. This is our task. So how can we do it? Let us say we identify the vertex 2, 3 and 4, right. So this is our current subset of vertices. We need to find out if I take this particular word, subset, whether my condition will be satisfied or not. So for that, what I am going to do is, I am going to go through the whole edge list. So this is my edge list here. This is my edge list, I am going to go through it. So in case of 1 and 2, right, my first edge is going to be 1 and 2. What I do is, I check either 1 or 2 is present in my vertex subset or not, right. If even one of them is present, I just cut off this particular vertex. That means this particular edge can be taken. Coming on to 4 and 1, I check either 4 or 1 is present in my subset or not. So 4 is present, so I cut off this one. Then 2 and 4, at least one of them should be present, so both of them are present. That means I cut this one off. 3 and 4, both of them are present, 5 and 2, 2 is present, so I cut this off, 1 and 3, so 3 is present, I can cut this off. So if at least for each, each edge in this particular edge list, if at least one of them is present, I can remove that particular edge, right. And if I am able to remove all the edges, that means this particular subset is a valid subset of vertices to form a vertex cover. Now among all of these size or different sizes of uh, subsets, I can consider the minimum size, right. This is going to be my whole approach. So in case you are wondering, uh, how do we actually code this? So if you go through all the subsets, 
you can easily go through it like this. So if I just go through all the values, so I, I is less than 1 left shift n and i plus plus. So what it will basically do is, let me just give you a small example. Let us say there are 3 vertices, right. Now if I run a loop from 0 to 2 raised to the power 3, 2 raised to the power 3 is 8, right. So my loop will be from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. If I represent all of them in this particular uh, binary form, this will be 0, this will be 1, this will be 1, 0, this will be 1, 1, this will be 1, 0, 0, this will be 1, 0, 1, this will be 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 1, right. So these are all the different values represented in binary form starting from 0 till less than 1 left shift n. Now how does this really help us? So as you can see that there are certain bits set in each of them, right. So I have represented only one bit here, it can also be written like this 0, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 0 and so on, right. So now you see each of these values have 3 bits out of which some of the bits are set and the others are not set, right. So the set bits in each of these values is representing that I can take that particular value. So let us say we consider 6, so 1, 1, 0. So you can consider this position as 0, this position as 1, this position as 2. So if I write 6 like this, what I am saying is I want to take the first element and the second element and I do not want to take the 0th element, right. This is how this particular uh, combinations can represent all the different subsets that we can take, right. And if you carefully observe all of these values, you would have covered all the different types of subsets possible with these three values, right. So now I can do this for all values of n and I can figure out what are all the elements that is present in my current subset. Now the problem with this approach was I was getting TLE. So if I show you my code, so this was uh, I believe the correct code, yeah. So as you can see this code is very, very small. What I have done is I have initialized my answer with a big value that is 20 in this particular case because the maximum number of vertices is n or 16, right. So basically if you want to find a vertex cover, if you take all the vertices that will definitely be a vertex cover. So I have taken a value bigger than 16 which is 20. Now I am going through all the possible uh, subsets, right. So in these subsets what I do is I take the number of edges as n. Now I am traversing through all the edges and I am subtracting one from them to take zero based indexing. So what I want to do is now I have two values x and y, these represent the vertices. I want to find whether the xth bit or the yth bit is set in this current value i or not, right. So what is i? i is going from 0 to less than 1 left shift n and each of these values of i is denoting a particular subset where the ith bit, where the xth bit let us say, where let us say this is i and where the jth bit is going to represent whether the jth vertex is taken or not, right. So in this case I want to find, I have two like vertices x and y, I want to find out whether x or y is present, right. Even if one of them is present that is good enough for me. So what I do, if i left shift x and 1 that means this condition will be true if the xth bit is set in i, this condition will be true if the yth bit is set in i, that means if the xth vertex is present in my current subset or the yth vertex is present in my current subset, I am going to subtract 1 from m. At the end if m is equal to 0, that means there are no left edges, I am going to set my an answer as minimum of answer comma built in pop count of i. So this is basically a C++ specific thing, what it helps to do is it finds the number of set bits in i. Right. So this is what we are trying to do and we just return the answer. Now this approach was constantly giving me TLE. So I had to move on to a little different approach. So now what I do is the overall idea will be still the same and the only thing that I am going to do now is I am going to use binary search, binary search on the number of set bits or on the final answer. So binary search on number of vertices. Right. So we are going to do binary search on the number of vertices. Let us see how this actually going to work. So what I am going to do is I am going to perform binary search. Let us say I am saying that my low is equal to 0 and my high is equal to n, right. So this value will always be false because with 0 number of uh, vertices I cannot find a vertex cover. This value will always be true because with n vertices I can definitely find a vertex cover. When I calculate the value of width mid, I want to find out whether it is possible to form a vertex cover with these number of vertices or not, right. So I, how I actually do it is, I know this particular value of mid, that means there should be mid number of set bits, mid set bits present in my number, right. So if I know this particular thing, 
I would want to find out all the numbers with these number of set bits present, right? But I was not able to figure this out. So what I did was a quick Google search helped me. So if I just show you, what I did was how to generate all numbers with x set bits, right? So now if you go to this particular Stack Overflow solution, they have recommended a very good website, and I can just show you this particular part. So as you can clearly see. This particular part right here, what it does is, it takes an input integer x and generates the next value of x with the same number of set bits as x, right. So why am I showing you this particular thing? What it will help us to do is, we just need to find the first value, we just need to find the first value with mid number of set bits, right. And if we are able to find this value, we can use this particular part the exact same code to generate the next value with having the same mid number of set bits, right. So this will help us to find a couple of values which have these number of set bits present and we already know when we have one particular value i, how do we need to perform our checker function, right. So for all of these values, we can figure out if at least one of these values satisfies our conditions or if at least one of these values is a valid vertex cover that means this is going to be a valid value of mid and that means I can form my answer with these number of set bits right. So this is exactly what I did. So if I just show you my final code you will realize that this is very simple if you understand this particular part right. So what I have done is I have initialized low and high as explained with 0 and n. And now what I do is I calculate the value of mid and I just check if this value is true or not. So if it is possible to generate a vertex cover with these this particular mid value then I am going to set high is equal to mid because high was always true otherwise I am going to set low is equal to mid because low is always false and at the end I am just going to return high right. So now how do how, how I am implementing the checker function I am initializing the first value with one left shift bit minus one. So how I come to this particular conclusion? You will observe that if I want to find the smallest number with 3 bits, right, 3 set bits. So it is going to be 1, 1, 1, right. So how can I initialize this particular value? What I can do is I do 1 left shift 3. If I do 1 left shift 3, it is actually going to be 1, triple 0. And if I do minus 1, it is going to be 1, 1, 1, right. So I have, so I was able to find the smallest value with these number of set bits, right. Now while current is less than 1 left shift n, so this is the same condition that we used in that particular for loop here. If I show you, this is the same condition here, right? Because this is the maximum value that we are able to achieve with these n bits, right? So while current is less than 1 left shift n, I am going to apply the exact same logic. Instead of just i, I am going to use this particular value of current. So what I am doing is, I am going to traverse through all the edges and if this xth bit is set in current or this yth bit is set in current, I am going to subtract 1 from m and at the end, if m is equal to 0, I am just going to return 1. If this particular condition does not get satisfied. That means with this value of current, it is not possible. But there is a high chance that with some other value having the same number of bits, it might be possible. So what I do is I set my current as next of current and my next function is here. It is the exact same function that I showed you. I got this particular from uh, code from Stack Overflow and uh, even I have seen this particular part for the first time. So I'm not sure. Like I'll not be able to explain how this works, but you can definitely use it to find the next number which has the same number of set bits as x, right? Once I find this particular number, I can just check for the next number. Now, if none of the numbers were able to satisfy the condition with these number of set bits, I'm just going to return 0 at the end. And that means with these particular set bits, I'm not able to find my answer, right? So this would be the final solution. And if I show you by submitting, so we'll wait, yeah. So you see this passes all the test cases and this solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand this particular solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and to be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.